Real churches center on Christ. And we have to keep asking ourselves, are we really, as a church and even as a person, really centered on Jesus Christ? And I want us to turn to one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. I hope you will put up with a little of my foolishness. But you're already doing that. I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it. The fact is that we are prone to wander away from a simple and pure devotion to Jesus Christ. We're prone to wander away from being a, a pure bride to Jesus Christ, devoted first and fully to Him. And Paul gives us three warnings here of what this looks like, what it looked like with the Corinthians and what it looks like today. They're like flashing lights warning us that we are getting off the track of being really centered on Jesus Christ. And I want us to look at those right now. And Paul warns us here about a different Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel. So let's look at these. Paul says, if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. 2 Corinthians 11.4 The someone who came to Corinth and was leading them the wrong direction was a group called the Judaizers. Wiest, in his commentary, says the Judaizers were nominal Christians who said that they believed in Jesus as the Messiah, but only as the Savior of Israel. They insisted that you could enter Christ's kingdom only through becoming, in essence, a Jew. And so they came into sharp contention with Paul on the real gospel. And in Acts chapter 15, verse 1, we read there, some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, unless you're circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. And this brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them because this was a different gospel. It was different because it was adding to the true central core of the gospel, the idea that you had to be circumcised. You had to keep the law of Moses or you couldn't be saved. In essence, you had to become like a Jew. 
And this brought Paul into contention because he knew this was a different gospel and it had to be resisted and fought against. And it brings us now to have to focus right at the beginning of our course, and I think it's good and important and ask, to ask the question, what is the real gospel? There's a lot of confusion on this. I was actually raised in a church, and I went to Sunday school. I wasn't a real Christian at that point. And one of the reasons is because in that Sunday school class, this is what they said the gospel was. They taught it to us in a song. And it has some truth in it, but it's just different enough to mislead me away from Christ. And this was the little song. I'm not a very good singer, but I'm going to sing it for you. And the song was this. Love, 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 love. The gospel in a word is love. Love your neighbor as your brother. For God is love. Do you hear what he's saying? Do you hear what that, that tune is teaching? It's saying that the gospel in a word is love. But you see, that's really not the good news. It's not good news that, if, that the only way I can be right with God is by really loving people. I mean, I'm a failure at that. It's not good news. It's not the gospel that if I just love people, that everything's okay between me and God. You see, that's really not the gospel. That's really not good news because you and I fall short of loving God with all, in our, of, of all, with all of our heart. We fall short of loving one another. We, we cannot be saved by these great commandments because we can't keep them. And so this is not good news in order to how we can, can be right with God. The good news is that we become right with God through the gospel in a word being not love, but that the gospel in a word is simply Jesus. In one word, the gospel is Jesus. In one, word, in one phrase from, from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, the gospel in two words is Christ crucified. That's good news. The gospel in one verse is John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so that's the gospel. That's good news. Jesus is the good news. And because I didn't understand that, I grew up believing that I believed in God, but Jesus wasn't important to me. And the Bible wasn't important to me. I just thought I had to love people. But as I saw, I was a miserable failure at that. I needed good news. And I'm so thankful for that Bible study I was invited to where I saw genuine Christians. And I'm so thankful that Billy Graham clearly proclaimed that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, John chapter 14, verse 6. And so that summer when I was 18 years old, I trusted Christ. I became a genuine Christian. I began the adventure of the Christian life. And I'm very thankful that uh, God reached me with the real gospel. And so we need to keep testing ourselves. Are we as a church really in kind of moving away from Jesus to the idea that to really find real life, it comes through love or it comes through following a law or it comes through the rules and the regulations and the codes that different people can come up with. You see, that's, we put up with that too easily because those are different Gospels. We have to come back and keep centering on Jesus Christ. And the great thing about the Gospel is, is that when I came to Christ, I came with all this bad baggage. I was carrying all these terrible things, like original sin and slavery to Satan, death, condemnation, alienation from God, aloneness. But in the Gospel, what happens is, is that all of my sin 
goes on, Christ, he who knew no sin, bore my sin, that I might have his righteousness, his life, his adoption of, as a son, the indwelling of his spirit. All of these things are the real gospel. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.